Pygmomorphogenesis refers to the effects of mechanical disturbances on plant morphology. It includes rapid leaf movement of sensitive plants, such as Mimosa pudica and Venus flytrap, which quickly coil their leaves when touched. Rapid leaf movements spread through electrical impulses called action potentials, which are analogous to animals' nervous system. Thigmomorphogenesis also includes thigmotropism. Tropism refers to growth response to stimuli, and thigmotropism refers to growth response to touch. It is a slower response than rapid leaf movement. For example, in climbing plants such as vines, specialized stem or leaf known as tendril would coil when they touch a supporting plant and wrap around it. On the other hand, gravitropism refers to a plant's growth response to gravity. Roots show positive gravitropism, whereas shoots show negative gravitropism. Plants may detect gravity by the settling of statoliths, which are specialized plastids containing dense starch grains. Photomorphogenesis refers to the effects of light on plant morphology. There are two major classes of light receptors, blue light photoreceptors and phytochromes. Blue light photoreceptors play a role in phototropism, which is the growth response to light. Blue light is detected by blue light photoreceptors at the shoot tip. The plant hormone oxygen accumulates on the dark side, increasing cell expansion on the dark side, causing the plant to bend towards light. Blue light photoreceptors known as cryptochromes play a role in seed germination. Detection of blue light slows hypocotyl elongation. Blue light photoreceptors also play a role in stimulating stomato opening, allowing carbon dioxide to enter plant and undergo photosynthesis. Blue light photoreceptors stimulate stomato opening through protein kinases known as phototropins. On the other hand, phytochromes exist in two photoreversible states. Red light triggers the conversion of R state to FR state whereas far red light triggers the conversion of FR state back to R state. The phytochrome system provides the plant with information about the quality of light by sensing the ratio of red and far red radiation. When a tree is shaded in a forest, most red light is absorbed by the upper canopy, resulting in a shift to predominantly R form of phytochrome, which induces the tree to allocate more of its resources to growing taller, promoting apical dominance. In contrast, direct sunlight increases the proportion of the FR form, which stimulates branching and inhibits apical dominance. The phytochrome system also plays an important role in establishing a plant's biological clock, as the R form phytochrome predominate at night, whereas the FR form of phytochrome predominate during the day. Phytochromes also influence seed germination. Red light stimulates germination, whereas far red light inhibits germination. Photoperiod refers to the relative length of night and day, and it is the environmental stimulus plants use most often to detect the time of the year. Photoperiodism refers to a plant's physiological response to photoperiod. An example would be the control of flowering. Short-day plants flower when the light period is shorter than a critical length, whereas long-day plants flower when the light period is longer than a critical length. It's important to note that flowering and other responses to photoperiod are actually controlled by night length and not day length. Photoperiods are detected by phytochromes. Red light can interrupt the nighttime portion of the photoperiod, causing long day plants to flower, whereas far red light can reverse the effects of red light, causing a short day plant to flower instead. Finally, phytochromes play a role in the deetiolation pathway, also known as the greenium plant. Etiolation refers to a morphological adaptation for growing in darkness. The etiolation is triggered by red light, which leads to a decrease of stem elongation, an increase in leaf expansion, chlorophyll production, and root elongation. The etiolation response spread through a signal transduction pathway. First, phytochrome is activated by red light, leading to the activation of the secondary messenger CGMP and also the opening of calcium channel leading to an influx of calcium ion. CGMP activates specific protein kinase 1, whereas calcium ions activate specific protein kinase 2, both of which activate specific transcription factor that encodes proteins for deetiolation response. Plants also respond to various environmental stresses, including both abiotic and biotic stresses. During droughts, plants increases production of abscisic acid, leading to the closure of stomata, to prevent severe water loss. Abscisic acid also slows leaf growth, reducing the exposed surface area. During flooding, the production of ethylene increases, leading to the apoptosis of many root cortex cells, creating air tubes that help plants survive oxygen deprivation. 
Plants respond to salt stress by producing solutes tolerated at high concentrations. This process keeps the water potential of cells more negative than that of soil solution, so that plant cells can remain turgid. Excessive heat can denature a plant's enzymes. Plants produce heat trap proteins to help protect other proteins from heat stress. Finally, cold temperatures can decrease membrane fluidity. Plants alter lipid composition of membranes in response to cold stress. Plants also produce antifreeze proteins to protect other proteins. Plants use defense systems against biotic stresses. Herbivory is a stress that plants face in any ecosystem. Plants encounter excessive herbivory with physical defenses such as thorns and chemical defenses such as distasteful or toxic compounds. Plants' first line of defense against pathogen infection involves the outer dermal tissues including epidermis and periderm. If a pathogen penetrates the dermal tissue, Many plant receptors recognize pathogen-associated molecular patterns, abbreviated as PMAPs, which are molecular sequences that are specific to certain pathogens. For example, a specific amino acid sequence within bacterial flagellin is perceived by a toll-like receptor in plants. However, over the course of evolution, pathogens have developed effectors, which evade the detection of PAMPs. As a result, plants develop a second level of immune system in which plants' resistance proteins would bind to pathogens' effectors, leading to signal transduction pathways that can activate two different immune responses. The hypersensitive response refers to local cell and tissue death that occurs at and near the infection site. Plants produce phytoalexins and PR proteins which attack the pathogen. On the other hand, systemic acquired resistance refers to plant-wide expression of defense genes. It is a non-specific immune response against a diversity of pathogens, which can last for a few days. It is triggered by the conversion of methyl salicylic acid to salicylic acid, which in turn activates a signal transduction pathway that increases the production of molecules that help protect the plant. The compound methyl jasmonic acid, derived from the hormone jasmine, also play an important role in the signal transduction pathway against herbivory and pathogen infection.